How to make the best natural cordage with dog bane. Hey everybody, my name is Scott Ellis. Welcome to another Guide You Outdoors video where we guide you to the outdoor lifestyle. Today I got a really cool one for you, something that I've been really into, which is making cordage. Yeah. Cordage is like a key element of being outdoors. If I were to classify, you know, the five most important things if I'm out there in a wilderness situation, kind of primal living or survival living or whatever, um, I would put cordage in there. And a lot of times I like to think of the C's or the cuz. Um, and the most important things if you're out there are cutting, combustion, cover, container, and my last one is cordage. It's just so useful, you know, if you want to do bow drill fire, this can be a piece of it. If you want to make a shelter, this can be a piece of it. The cordage plays a key element, and it did with the natives as well, on um, living off the land. And you know what? You don't have to go to the hardware store to get cordage. You can just go in your backyard and collect some really cool materials to make cordage. So today I'm gonna to show you um, how to take my favorite plant. I think this is the best natural cordage out there. This is a plant called dogbane. Dogbane's a great resource. We're gonna walk you through how to find it and then how to turn that plant into some rope that you could use for all sorts of purposes. Hey everybody. I wanna introduce you all to a pretty cool plant that has a really cool use. Um, and this plant is right here and here. Um, it's called Dogbane. Dogbane, roof, roof, bane. Um, and it grows in these nice kind of grassy meadows. So I have this area near my house that's actually a leach field of a condo area. And the grass grows up really tall. Um, and this is a great time of year to harvest this plant right before they're gonna mow areas like this. So I tend to kind of hit this area before it gets mowed. Um, Dogbane is a unique plant. So the Native Americans really prized this plant. It was their preferred plant for making rope or cordage of any type. So fishing line even was made out of this or the strongest rope that they could possibly get. Um, and they would actually like rotate their fields that they grew corn and harvested in. And the years that they weren't growing it, they would um, actually encourage dogbane to grow in those areas by taking the seed pods. So these are the seed pods right here. And you can see these are the seed pods. Um, and they would, when these were about to open up, they would actually go out and spread these seed pods around in areas um, where they weren't gonna grow. And so dogbane would be the dominant plant in that area. Uh, and that way they could have a really good harvest the next year. And kind of, without actually planting it, they just, you know, pop these open. And they look a lot like milkweed seeds. And you can see these little puffs here. And they would take these out and just purposely kind of spread them and that would be enough to help kind of ensure that dogbane would grow in that same area again in the future. Um, it's a relative of um, milkweed. So it's actually in the cannabis family as well. So you think of hemp as a really good cordage. Uh, milkweed and dogbane are both in that same hemp family. And when you look at some of this dogbane, the best way, and I'll cut you one here, um, to identify the dogbane, if you have it around your area, it's a really cool thing to harvest. It has a really red stalk, especially later in the season. Um, and it has opposite branching. So right here you can see two branches coming out in the same spots. And the leaves, if you see them, are oval shaped leaves that come out like so. And when you cut it, one of a, the other characteristics, a milky substance will come off right where you cut it. Same way that milkweed will kind of have that milky substance. And that prevents a lot, it is like a slightly toxic, it, I mean, you wouldn't want to eat it, it's not gonna kill you, um, but it prevents a lot of critters from eating this plant. You know, milkweed we know the caterpillars love. Uh, monarch caterpillars will um, eat that and that actually makes them toxic for birds to eat. And that's the reason that monarch caterpillars will eat that. So it's very similar where you find milkweed growing tends to be the same habitat that you'll find dogbane growing. And when you cut a stalk like this, and I have a bunch prepared for you guys, um, you'll actually let it dry, and then I'll walk you through the whole way how we're gonna use this to make some cordage. Um, but really cool plant, dogbane. 
Uh, if, you, if you have an open field around you that hasn't been hayed or taken down, normally not a hay field, um, but an area where it just gets grown up with grass and then they brush it, tends to be uh, really nice. Or sometimes on the edges of meadows, it will grow really well as well. But that red stalk, opposite branching, oval shaped leaves, milky substance coming out. Um, and when you find those seed pods, then you know 100% that you have that dog bane. Um, and this is kind of late summer, tends to drop its seed pods that come out. So, cool plant. So here, here we go again. This is a really good example that you have dog bane. These are these seed pods when they're growing off of it. Much smaller than milkweed seed pods. But um, this is an ideal plant. Nice tall stalk, great for cordage. I will take these seed pods off actually and spread these around in this area so I know in future years I'll have more dogbane. As you can see in this range map, dogbane, Latin name Apocynus cannabinum, or also called Indian hemp, can be found throughout North America and it is a native plant to this area. So in late summer I collected all of this and now it is kind of like mid-fall I would call it. And um, after I cut these, I um, let them just dry for a while. So I just put them in a dry place. I kind of wrapped them up with a little bit of um, bark that I peeled off of one of them when it was green. And I have a nice little bundle here. This is plenty of cordage that I can make quite a bit with. Um, and you know, probably what, 30 stalks or so right here. It took me 10 minutes to collect all this. Let it dry for a few months. And now it's time to take this dry material and turn it into cordage okay you can find this in winter as well uh, the it is really rot resistant um, so a lot of times actually even like highway medians I see this stuff growing sometimes and I'm like ooh, there's some dog bane and it's red stock uh, shows up even more in winter when the leaves are off sometimes a little harder to identify but here's a stock of dog bane you know it's about arm length um, the longer the better because it's gonna get you longer fibers which is gonna be much better for making your cordage so we're gonna get into the process of how am I going to turn this into rope and you'll see actually into this right here. This is a dog bay necklace that I've been wearing for over a year. It doesn't rot, it feels good, it's a nice um, great cordage. So the first step in taking this, I always kind of start with the fat end of it and I'm going to pinch it. This one's kind of flattened out. So I'm going to take it and pinch it. Oh this one's off, I got to go start a little bit lower. Ah, uh, there it goes. I'm gonna pinch it flat, and it's actually gonna make a crease in it. You can see as I'm gonna work my way, this is a great kind of process that you wanna go slow. You don't need to rush this, this is fun. The purpose of doing this is kind of being intentional and slowing things down. You might be like, oh, I could find a quicker way to do this, but do you need to? Well, let me take your time, make it right. Um, and you can always go back through a lot of these steps as well. Once you have this bark off, you can undo your cordage and redo it again better if you weren't happy with it. But I'm gonna pinch it and I'm gonna just slowly kind of, I'm making it flat and I'm going all the way down the stock to the very end. All right, yeah, nice. Pinch it, it could get a little hard at spots. Sometimes I'll actually use a fingernail or some people will push it against a hard surface. But I find just going down with my fingers and taking my time and getting down to the very end. All right, now that I've pinched it once, I'm actually going to now turn it and pinch it again the other direction, okay? This one was much easier, um, but I'm gonna end up kind of pinching it twice, flattening it. You'll hear it kind of cracking and going along. That's what you're going for as you're coming along. Awesome. So I've pinched it down twice. The next step is I'm going to want to peel it open. All right. So as I take this, I'm going to kind of find a little spot where it cracks there. You can see it's cracked open. And now I'm going to slide this open so that I can make one big, long, flat surface. And I just have my finger in that crack and I'm running my finger down. So I've now created this, and you'll see with this, it typically will have four strands because I pinched it twice. And so I'll have four kind of chunks and this one nice long flat piece. Cool, moving right along. 
Our next step is we want to remove the inner part, okay? This outer red bit, this is the really good fiber. Um, we wanna get rid of this kind of stiffer inner piece. So to get us started, we're just gonna bend up and crack it, okay? So I cracked it, and now if I put my finger underneath and I roll back, you'll see those little inner pieces starting to pop off and I can just peel these off. So now I have just this little flimsy part up top and the rest still has the inner bark. So up here, you can see the inner bark is off. These little pieces, if you're outdoors, just throw them into nature, they're organic, they'll compost back down, there's no harm in that. It's a fun little job to do outside. Now, if I wanted to, some people wanna rush this, if I were to take this and that inner part and just peel it off, the whole way, I would get run out and I would lose these really nice long fibers that I want to keep. So this is a time to take your time and do it right um, and be patient with it. The better you do this process, the better longer fibers you will have and the better cordage you will have in the end. The system is pretty simple. So I'm gonna, now I have the end of my hard piece here and this is just the fibers. I'm gonna go about an inch in and I'm gonna snap again, snap up. Okay, I'm gonna start peeling that back just like I did the last time, but I'm gonna go about halfway, okay? So I push that back till it's about halfway, and now I'm gonna go back to the other side, and I'm gonna hold these, pull these pieces down and pull up, and that way I'm going to get these ends to start poking up, and I will go until they pop off to the halfway point from before. And voila, I have my four little chunks popped off and I didn't get any run out that comes on that. Okay, so now I've just got this little piece here with no run out and I'm going to continue that process. So about an inch, snap, roll back about halfway, go to the other side, roll back, peel off, okay? I rushed a little bit. You can see I got a little bit of run out on some of those pieces. Not the, the worst part. The better and more patient you are at this, the pure piece. Once again, snap, roll up about halfway, go to the other side, roll back. And I can do all four at once. The first time you do this, you'll see I kind of have four different chunks coming out here. Uh, you may want to just try and do one, uh, kind of split it to just one piece. Um, but as you get a whole stock, it's pretty easy to do all four at once if you're just patient and keep this under control. Let's get you another view of how to do this. So I'm gonna snap up. I'm gonna roll that back so those four pieces come up. You can see there. Now I'm going to peel them back from the other side. You can push with your thumb, kind of develop your technique here, and voila, all four pieces come off. I have my four strands here. I'm going to move down another inch. Snap. Peel back, pushing with my finger underneath. Those four strands come up. Now on the other side, I like to push with my thumb a little bit. Once you get good at this, you can go faster. But take your time. And the goal here is to get these nice four pieces that are coming off nice and clean. My last bit here, I'm gonna kinda get a little knotty at the end, there were some branches just going to peel out this last bit and I might lose my little tips but you'll see I can't even rip this off oh, I wanted to tear that off it won't even tear but the last little pieces I actually like if they get a little thin it helps me kind of weaving in our new pieces at the end so at the end I now have my great long pieces of what is going to become cordage so now I've taken what was this stock of dog bane and I have transformed it into 
just these fibers. Nice long fibers here. This is a great product for making cordage, okay? You can make quite a bunch of these if you want to make thicker rope, just use more of this. You want to make thinner rope, use less of it, all right? Um, and the key here, as we kind of get started with this, is this stuff's fine. I mean, it's pretty strong as it is. I mean, you could, in a quick pinch, just use this for cordage, okay? Um, but we want to make this much stronger, so we're going to use the double wrap system, um, which is a great way, just with your hands, to make some awesome fiber. To do this, I have my four different chunks here. You guys can see four different chunks. I'm going to split them in half. So I'm going to end up having two that are just on their own, okay? And to start with, I'll show you in a sec how to add in more fiber. If you want to make longer rope, adding in fiber is going to be a key to that. But we're going to just use these, this one stock, and you could make you know, a bracelet length or maybe even a necklace length or just a little bit of cordage. But I want to kind of get as much as I can out of this system. Um, and the key here as we set all this up is you don't want one strand to be thicker than the other. We're going to end up with two strands we're working with, um, and we want them to be about equal length. So my system that I like to start with is to make them about equal. I take the thinner little ends and I crisscross them together so that they're doubled up here. Okay, My longer ends are down here and my thinner ends are together. And I'm going to join these to make the beginning of it so I have a middle spot. Make sure your fingers are feeling good for this. You want a nice, you don't want to like just take a shower. You want a little bit of grit and stickiness that are to your fingers so they rub together nicely. Um, and now I have my two pieces and I am going to roll with my index finger going forward and my thumb coming back, okay? Index finger forward, thumb coming back and I am going to twist these two fibers, okay? twist those two fibers until they start to really get tight together. This is right about in the middle. I'm gonna keep twisting. I'm holding with my left hand, spinning with my right hand until a point where they just almost won't spin anymore. And then I'm going to pinch it up into a little bit of a top here, like a bite is what we would call this. This is the beginning of it all. all right. Once again, I'm going to roll forward. So top finger forward, thumb back, until I can't twist anymore. Let these two come to a pinch and they'll actually kind of spin on top of each other there. Left hand is just gonna pinch that pinch. I now have two strands. Top strand, spin forward, roll back. New top strand, roll forward, Spin back. My left hand is just pinching it right where it's coming together at each point. And this one here, my right, if you're lefty, you just do everything opposite of what I'm saying. Um, that will be helpful to you. But if you're right-handed, or you could try it both ways, you're gonna roll forward, twist back. Your long ends might get a little bit tangled with each other, that's totally fine. And this is it. That's the whole process. This is where you kind of just get into a meditative moment. Sometimes you may need to kind of get it a little bit twisted up better that way. Roll back. Nice and tight. You want to kind of roll it until it's so tight that you can't really get it much more. And now I'm going to just twist forward, roll back. Twist forward, roll back. Twist forward, roll back. Twist forward. And you're gonna just continue that process all the way down to the end. If you don't like how it's twisting, like you're just not getting it right, take it apart and start over again. Yeah, just do it all over. So I didn't like how this one started. I'm just gonna unroll it, take it apart, and start the whole system over again, okay? So no, no big deal. And actually, sometimes I found to make really good cordage, you take it apart and do it again, it gets a little softer, it gets a little bit easier to work with, so. To, if you wanna speed up the system, you can actually get quite a bit of twist early in this. And if you have good jeans or the right pants, you get a little bit going, but you're gonna kind of roll that up earlier 
and you can work this whole piece and get it pretty well twisted up before you even get to it. And that will help you later on in making this kind of go quicker. So now let's say I don't have enough to make all the fishing line. Let's say I may have wanted to make fishing line out of this. I would actually go a little bit thinner with fishing line. Um, but this one stalk is not going to be a long enough strand. One thing to be aware of is wherever you add new fibers, that is going to be the weakest point in your whole system or anywhere you tie a knot. The rest of this is quite strong stuff, um, but as you add in fibers, you are going to lose some strength. Um, the one key also with adding fibers in is add them early. Don't wait till you get right to the end and then add them in. Better to like try and make it a little bit thicker and add them in earlier. I'm gonna show you how I would add more fibers in. So here's another stalk that I peeled uh, the inner part of the bark. And let's say I'll take one strand of this. So I just have a nice thin piece that I could add in. And I like to add in with the thinner end here first. One way to do this is to take this new piece and you're just going to cross it through so a little bit goes on one side and the rest adds to the other side and it will then become part of this bundle and i'm going to hold it just in that little system so a little bit kind of tapers out on this side and the other one goes into the other side and i'm going to continue with that system of twist roll and i've just now added in another fiber you can see the little tip of it there, that's just gonna disappear as it goes in. And now I've added a third strand onto this side. If you feel that one side is getting thinner than the other, you wanna add because you want them to really be equal length as you go along. So typically, once I add one strand to one side, I'm going to want to add another to the other side. So I'll take another thin piece and I'll start with that very thin end, and this time I can see my little tail. This is my tail that I added on the other one, so I'm going to add that tail to the other side. I'm just going to lay it basically in like so, so that one little bit goes on one side and the other goes on the other, and I'm going to twist, roll, twist, roll, and I've just added fibers in. So now I could continue to keep doing that and go on forever. I could make this rope as long as I wanted, as long as I have plenty of dog bane to keep going. Your fingers. Um, but I like to, if I'm going for a longer piece, you'll notice now I have this other one, I'll kind of add in periodically so I'm keeping a consistent thickness throughout. So I finished my piece of cordage. Yeah, look at it, it's nice, all right? The ends, don't worry about it. They won't really unravel if you wanna put a knot at the end, but I find, you know, I'll trim these off if I'm at the end of it. This is a nice little piece that I could use for all sorts of little things. If I want to go longer, I could obviously go longer. Strength of this stuff, let's test it, let's see. I'm gonna, ah, no way. No way could I break that. That is some strong little rope. Um, doesn't have any like real stretch to it, but it's a nice static, strong rope. I mean, thicker version of this, I'd put my life on the line of this stuff. I did a fun experiment with some of my students where I challenged them who could make the strongest one, and they, one group made this one that was about this thick around, and they made a loop that was about this big, and we were able to put a metal chain off of it actually, and we hung the entire class, about 12 individuals held off of a thick piece of this. Um, this could obviously, this could hold my weight. I, I would trust this with, um, you know, 200 pounds or so of weight on it. And it's a nice fiber. I might clean this up a little bit. So if I, I would go in with a knife or scissors and just get some of those loose little ends that come out, especially at the beginning where I kind of fed in my, if you, anywhere where you feed in new fibers, you might get loose little ends. But a nice little piece of string, you could use it for all sorts of things. You know, you could use it for jewelry if you wanted. You could use it for utility stuff. You could go out in your backyard and get rope rather than having to go to the hardware store. So self-reliance, which is great. Um, cordage, this is one of the top five things you're gonna need in any type of wilderness survival situation. And you can find it and make it really easily.
Great. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, remember to subscribe to Guide You Outdoors if you like our videos. Sorry we haven't posted as much lately. And get outside.